welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And this is Campbell Florence. And today we're talking about the Twilight Zone episode, Point of Origin. The episode was written by Matthias Herndahl and directed by John Griffin. Or the other way around. Let me see which um, order that should be in. Other way around. Directed by Matthias and written by John, or did I say it that way? I don't know. I don't remember. But um, it aired May 16th for the first time, and so this will be a spoiler-filled review. Um, The episode is starring Jennifer Goodwin, um, James Frain, Toby Levins, Sabrina Guevara, Karen Conneval, um, and Michael Endland. And it's all about uh, illegal immigration, illegal aliens, and, and using that term both literally and figuratively in the episode. Um, so Jennifer Goodwin is, her character is a privileged, upper class, um, stay at home mom who is able to hire full time nanny, housekeeper, who is uh, apparently not in the country legally and she gets taken in, in pretty quickly in the episode and then we get to see things through the perspective of um, now what if this happened to her. What did you think of the episode, Campbell? It was a really good episode. So some of the things that stuck out to me um, were just the things that she w- what had no clue um, that her children were up to every day. Uh, the Just going to the grocery store and how just the act of of getting the groceries and interacting with people and all that was very foreign to her because she had not had to do it in so long, if if at all ever. And that was interesting. And then also her kids spoke Spanish to uh, their nanny from Guatemala. Um, and she dismissively, you know, says, I just assumed you'd be deported back to Mexico to her. And so it was a nice allegory on on the current state of of immigration. Uh, but then also it, it brought it to the next level that, well, she also is a traveler. They called her a pilgrim. And uh, she was leaving a war-torn place and, and coming here for solace and refuge. And and now they're holding her captive. So we got to see things through that perspective in her eyes. And she was just trying to get home. And, oh, it's just, it's gut-wrenching. What what else do you have to, what other moments stood out to you? The end of the episode was really good. What happened in the end? She got home and then, like... The, her husband and two children were, like, looking at her differently, and then the two kids went upstairs, and then the dad was saying, like, you're not my wife anymore, and then she was saying, like, yes, I am, and then, uh, the, I think it's the HIS, yeah, the H, no, the the HSI, the HSI, uh, yeah, the HSI came in, uh, and she said, this is my house, get out, and then, like, the main bad guy said, and you're in mine. Yeah, it's or my home. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty powerful. I like to see um, the, the Vancouver landscape again. Some some buildings recognizable from filming in Vancouver, and also some of the actors in the episode. That was cool. And I think it was re- it was really solid. It was creepy. It had that old school vibe again. They they sort of dressed these upper class people dressed as if it were set in the 50s and everything was decorated in that way and then of course the stark contrast to their holding cells and and how that solitary confinement was affecting her and all the things she was trying to do to stay uh, or you know keep her mind active it's just I can only imagine well let's rank this episode on a scale of zero to ten zero being you hated it ten being you think it's a perfect episode what should our scale be I was thinking maybe those grocery bags that she has to buy. She has to buy a lot of those. Oh, yes. And, you know, the other thing I was thinking of is the ice cream cone. Oh, yeah. Should you have a... Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. The ice cream cone, that's good. Because, you know, that ice cream truck keeps playing a part, and then even Jordan Peele is eating an ice cream cone at the end. So how many ice cream cones do you give point of origin? I give it about nine. I'm going to give it an eight. Uh, Eight ice cream cones. I think... Again, it was great storytelling, Twilight Zone, getting us to think about things. It's sci-fi-ish, but it's based in reality. Getting getting us to think about things, getting us out of our comfort zone. 
seeing things from a new perspective, putting the characters and in turn the audience in a place that maybe we haven't been before or thought about before. Uh, Here are Meg's thoughts on the episode. Hey guys, so here are my thoughts on the eighth episode of The Twilight Zone. Okay, so it's called Point of Origin, and obviously, you know, pretty soon into it, we kind of get an idea of what it's about. Um, I First of all, I have to say I absolutely loved the aesthetic. It kind of made me think of Riverdale, where it's like an old-fashioned aesthetic, but it's taking place now. I thought it harkened back to the original Twilight Zone, and also made sense and was appropriate for the themes. Um, so he- here's what I really liked about this episode. I think that something that kind of lacked in Not All Men, which of course was an amazing episode, but I think something it lacked was subtlety. I felt like Not All Men was just a slightly, a little bit too heavy handed. And I felt like this episode, save for a few little things in the beginning, I felt like it really, it really was an art and subtlety. I thought it was written very well. And um, there was just several times where the dialogue like really got to me, especially at the end when she comes in and her husband is like, you know, that no, you're not this person. And and really like sort of separating her from himself and his daughters and, and sort of the verbiage he used was, was very um, haunting there. And also when um, she, she first is in this sort of terrible place and she sees Anna, her her nanny and um, the woman who had been working for her for 11 years. And and she says, oh, my God, you know, I, I didn't I didn't believe you'd be in a place like this. And uh, Anna's like, yeah, you did. You knew I was here. It was really easy to turn the TV off. And of course, that part, you know, it's certainly it hit home to what the whole point of this episode is about and and of course it's about not just white privilege um not even just privilege of of wealth which of course it dealt with both of those two things but i think more than anything sort of this idea that as americans we deserve to be here more than anyone else and you know the whole the whole irony being that we're all immigrants and you know I think this whole idea of like that she was from another dimension rather than another planet to where I really liked that she was from an, another dimension. I thought that was really cool. And I thought that they did such a good job of like talking about sort of how this place is less, less good. <laughs> That's probably not a very good way to put it, but it's, it's not as nice it it doesn't have the blue sky, you know, the way that people see America um, and how now she's an interloper and she doesn't even know it. And again, it's going back to that irony of, you know, we all come from another country, um, yet we because we like gauge what is better and what is worse. We've decided that people who come from certain countries um, don't belong, don't belong here. So. You know, obviously there's so much to unpack and, and um, I say all the time, you know, somebody somebody write a college paper on this because um, I, th- I think it would be so fun to explore. But if I'm comparing and contrasting it with Not All Men, the last episode, while I feel like this episode had um, better subtleties and sort of dealt with, with the issue at hand with a little bit of lighter touch, which I liked, one thing that I think the, the last episode had over this one if I'm going to compare is there weren't as many compelling characters in this one obviously there's something unlikable about Jennifer Goodwin's character um, which was important and she had to be that character but at the same time I didn't I didn't feel quite the empathy and, and quite the compulsion to care about her as, as I did uh, the characters in the last episode but oh my gosh, I mean, just this idea that, you know, she has this woman working for her and, and that's the her only window into that world and how she chooses to continue to sort of be ignorant. And, and she's telling the story about what happens to Anna, to her friends, and she sort of 
I don't know, kind of puts herself in this place of, well, like Anna says, she can just shut the TV off and and pretend like it's not affecting her when in reality this is affecting everyone, everything that's going on, you know, at the border, um, people being separated. And it also, it really made me think of the Holocaust a lot too, of like this idea, like we live in a world where the Holocaust happened and it didn't even happen that long ago, really, in the the, um, spectrum of real things. I mean, it really didn't happen that long ago so the idea that you can be taken away like that you know people and I and I will definitely say that I'm included in this people who live in a privileged life feel like that can't happen to you uh, when the reality is it can and it isn't something you should just shut off and ignore it is something that you know even though it feels insurmountable it's something that we have to deal with this is the reality so I think Twilight Zone's been doing a really good job of you know they there was mystery in this episode I didn't know what was going to happen there was that horror element there's a sci-fi element but then of course that really strong undercurrent of things that are happening that that are important and, and that are part of our culture now and were a part of our culture um, back when the Twilight Zone was first born all those decades ago. So um, it was just a really well done episode, well written. The dialogue I found um, quite well done. It has um, Karen Conoval in it, who is a great actress who's been, she was just in the newest season of The X-Files, and she is in a famous episode called Home, so that was really cool to see and remind us that uh, Twilight Zone is definitely filmed in Vancouver, so that was cool too. But yeah, I am I'm was really pleased with this episode. I thought it was a really good, solid, well-written one, and I'm going to give it um, eight eight uh let's see oh let's see what is our scale oh how about those little the little family she has the little sticker on the back of her car I like how hers were like of you know kind of that 60s era look although it's like a new sort of thing so I I really like that that was funny and she of course is one of those people would have one of those on her car of course um so I'm gonna give it an eight because I, like I said, it has that deft hand that I, I think the last episode was was maybe missing out on a few times, but it doesn't have as the compelling of characters. So that's what I'm going to give it an eight. All right, guys. Well, I want to hear what you guys think. So tweet us, tell us on Facebook uh, what you thought about the eighth episode. So reminders, we're going to keep talking about um, Twilight Zone next week. It's I think it's called The Blue Scorpion, and it's a, something about a gun. Yeah, I think it's like his like the guy's dad committed suicide with the blue scorpion and then like he's addicted to it. I don't know. It's it's going to be cool. I mean, regardless, I'm looking forward to it. So, oh, and we got uh, the trailer dropped for the next season of Black Mirror, which, you know, of course is Twilight Zone-esque. Um that's starting June 5th and then um also starting Around that time is Handmaid's Tale, so we've got a lot of dystopian (laughs) bleakness to look forward to. Until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. See you in the horror section.